And there's pitcher Dick Selma cheerleading for his pals in the bleacher section as they employ the Cubs to hit one out of here. There was a phrase back in 69 called the counterculture. Symbolized everything in the streets, around the country. The Cubs organization, it was straight laced, crew cuts and ties. Some might say, oh, those bums in the bleachers, bunch of hippies. just an amazing time to be alive. I don't care about the day. There was this revolution that was happening on every level. The molecules of the air were just charged with possibility. They were also charged with violence and craziness. The bleachers in 1969 was not just a respite from the chaos that was happening in the world, it was fun. All I wanna be. I was only 19 years old at the time. I was worried about getting drafted. The left field bleachers, Wrigley Field, that was just a place to get away from it all. Just leave all that world behind. That's how I looked at it. The town went crazy for the 69 Cubs. I mean, 67 and 68 were something, but 69 just exploded. All of a sudden, there weren't 4,000 people coming to games. There were 40,000. The bleacher bums, that was where the cool place seemed to be. And here's the cheerleader Salma getting the bleacher fans going. We did as much as we could in the bleachers to entertain the fans and ourselves. And Dick Selma, he was like the leader of the bullpen. We'd be losing a baseball game. They start chanting Selma, 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 Selma. He was one of the starters, and generally the starters sit on the bench, but he would always go down, sit in the bullpen. So Selma will get the tower and start wheeling them like this, and they will start cheering, they will start cheering, and all of a sudden we start scoring some runs. The Bleacher Bums, we had two goals in life. Help the Cubs win and make the other team miserable. For some reason, Mike Murphy would know what would drive an outfielder crazy. He found out that Lou Brock was afraid of mice. Turns out one of the bleacher bums worked in a laboratory somewhere that had laboratory mice. So Lou Brock runs out to left field in the bottom of the first. And they threw the mice on the field hoping that Brock would be afraid of mice, but he wouldn't catch the ball. The mice, they bang, bang, they just bang, and they ran around. They were fine. Everybody was fine. But then, the big shock. Lou Brock was not afraid of mice. Sit back, look down there, he's laughing, now he's waving at us. It backfired, but it was still fun. They were the first guys that ever threw home run balls back on the field. I mean, that's what I remember. I happened to be standing right next to Ron Grousel the day it happened. So Ron Grousel catches the home run ball from Hank Aaron. He looks at it and he says, I don't want no stinking enemy ball. Boom, he fires it all the way back towards second base. You can tell the whole ballpark's watching this ball roll. Where'd that ball come from? I wasn't at that game, so I wouldn't know. And then I was at the game with Mike Haley. He got hit right on the side of the head here with a baseball. Next thing you know, he whips the thing back in the field, and everybody just thought it was the funniest thing they've ever seen, you know? And that's how I remember the first ball going back on the field. The bleacher bums actually became friends, not just acquaintances, friends with many of the players. The relationship with the bleacher bums, well, with the fans, were personal. We were one-on-one -on -one with them. You know, not just myself, I'm talking about everybody. At that time, I was driving up a Wildcat Buick, and they all knew it because we had to walk across the street to get in our car. And uh, I would turn around and give them the peace sign. They would all holler up there and give me the peace sign back and have another sip of beer. And they just enjoyed life. I tell you, they enjoyed life. We had fans, sometimes 
in our dugout, in the seats, following us on the road, and wanting us to win. If there was a high watermark, it was the Atlanta trip. President of the Cubs, P.K. Wrigley, in the middle of a game, sent one of his uh, men out to the bleachers. And he said, Mr. Wrigley wants to pay for a trip uh, for the bums to go down to Atlanta. It was just a crazy experience. One of the bums dressed up in a, a bear outfit and tackled Nakahoma. Boom! Out of the Cubs dugout comes this big running crazy bear, Ron Grousel. Boom! Give him a shoulder, blindsides him. About three minutes there, Ron Grousel had every beer with his back out in the left field bleachers. It was great. I mean, the bleacher bones really helped the Cubs win that series down in Atlanta. And that's all because of Wrigley. That was a great thing that he did. They were magical on all fronts, on hitting, on pitching, on fielding. They were amazing. So it just felt like the World Series was a given. It was just a given.